you made a video uh, disassociating yourself with the passport bros. Yeah. All right. Can you give us an explanation of why you did it, or was it more so clickbait, or what's your thoughts behind why you dis disassociated uh, uh, with the passport bros? Because you really helped build a brand. Uh -huh. You know, you helped push it forward. Uh, some people say you might have tarnished it to a certain I degree. Too. Uh, but what's your thoughts on it? Uh, All right, we got my man Austin Holloman, Mr. Controversial in the building today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How's everything going with you, man? It's going good. I'm glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. So, man, you, you've been making your rounds. Uh -huh. you, you're back in Thailand right now. Yes. Uh, what's the big difference from the first time you visit to the time now, the second, second go around? Third go around. It's your third. It's your third, third go around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first time I was here, I think starting off in Pattaya was a little too busy. I probably should have started off in Bangkok and then came to Pattaya. Uh, in Bangkok, I stayed in Bangkok my second go around and I loved it. And then when I came to Pattaya, it was a lot easier to have that transition right after. But uh, I'll be back. But I wouldn't stay here long term. I still need. I'm still traveling the world to see where is the right fit for me. So far, not. Tyler, yeah, you made a video uh, disassociating yourself with the passport, bros. Yeah. All right. Can you give us an explanation of why you did it, or was it more so clickbait, or? Uh, I did not want to do it. Number one, right? I enjoyed it. I got it right here. Mm -hmm. But uh, whatever you, the whole situation I had in Brazil, the thing about being under a label is they group everybody under, and they can whatever one person is doing. The whole team, because it's like a team. If one person uh, gets hurt on the football team, it affects everybody. So in that scenario with uh, Stephanie Hibero, she has Globo and CNN writing articles about me. And Black Men Travels, which is not the same group as Passport Bros, from my understanding. That's my group, by the way. You know, that's my group. Yeah. Right. So they, they had a uh, thing in the Discord where she put in there that, oh, they're secretly hiding cameras to record them, you know, sleeping with women. And you told me that was otherwise, that that's not what that was for. And I didn't know that until you said that. But reading that, I was like, damn, do I really? Because they're trying to call me the leader, which I never claimed that, right? They're trying to call me the leader. If I am, and that's happened, that's just like the president. That Everything that happens under his presidency falls under the president. And I don't do that kind of stuff. So why would I want that to be in my articles? I was like, uh, maybe... I'm gonna stick to the same message, but maybe I don't need a label, and I just need, I want Austin Holloman to be responsible for Austin Holloman's actions, and not nobody else that's underneath the same label. All right, so because there's no recruitment process. Facts. But give us some context, uh, somebody started a Discord account, I had nothing to do with it, not associated with it. They used the graphics of uh, Black Man Travels, and uh, it wasn't like it was some type of uh, improvement process or anything, people were just posting up random stuff. But uh, she did take that particular post out of context when I looked into it. Uh, the Discord, of course, is no more because I didn't want to be associated with that type of stuff as well. But it was really more so of a security feature that she took out of context. Now, the thing about it, she takes a lot out of context, talking about the, the woman Everything. in Brazil. Um, but the funny thing is, she has the network to make it feel like it's so many Brazilians against you when it's really just her have a, some type of personal issue with you. Uh, what do you think it was that triggered her to kind of go on this uh, witch hunt, so to say, of accusations, baseless accusations on you? That's a really good question. Uh, I've heard people say that they think it was an agenda because she's somewhat of a politician, kind of from my understanding, or maybe she's a lobbyist, I don't know. Uh, that's a really good question. Why does she target me that much? Because there's people, American YouTubers, and I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus. I am gonna throw one person under the bus that are still in Brazil that I know personally doing the same, if not worse, videos than I am. I mean, I would love for them to go find a thumbnail I had of a woman in a bikini in Brazil that a picture that I took to represent this is what you need to come to Brazil for. All the women that I had in my thumbnails and videos were fully dressed. And yeah, I may have had a few questions that may have touched on a sexual topic, but it wasn't the whole purpose of the video. Uh, but of course, in the news articles, when I said, do Brazilian women like, uh, do Brazilian like men that touch them, like rub on them while they're talking to them, or be affectionate. 
And of course, she blurs out the girl's face and has me grabbing her and looking at her like this as if I'm some sort of 90-year-old creep or something. She she takes it out of context like that. I I think it's an agenda too that maybe she, I actually, I, I would love to know why. I, I think it's an agenda, maybe it's something personal. Uh, but one of the guys that read it, this guy Stephen Story, he messaged her, <laughs> he messaged her on Instagram saying, don't look for Austin in, Sao, in uh, Salvador, he's in Sao Paulo right now. And he was bragging on Twitter, yeah, I did that, I, I assisted if it needs to be done again. And now he's on Philly Dom's channel, and I told Philly Dom to watch out for this guy. He's on his channel doing the same type of videos about dating in Brazil that I was doing. Now, was that some sort of team effort? I don't know. But if it was a team effort, it wasn't working because his videos aren't really doing anything. But it was it's an odd situation. I'd love to see. Uh, but I'm taking legal matters into my own hands now. So I'll get to the bottom of it eventually. It's, legal matters take time, but uh, I can't let it slide. Because now if you type my name in on Google, all these negative things pop up, you know defamation yeah on major news networks like cnn so it looks a, a lot more legit so any new woman that meets me has what is this or well, she might not even ask what this is and may be turned away right away anyway so yeah that's that's defamation of character in its finest okay and you uh are you gonna take any legal actions against her or? yeah i already done cool. Out of all the countries you've been to, you've been to, just give us a rundown how many countries you've been to so far. Colombia, Brazil, Thailand, Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, next Tanzania, so it'll be number eight here in a few days. All right, so somebody said, Austin, you can never turn back and go back to the Matrix ever again. You gotta pick a country to live in. Which country would you choose to live in at this point in your journey? Ooh, it's top four. That's in between Vietnam, Thailand, not, no, Vietnam, Brazil, Colombia. That's top three, my bad. I'm gonna have to, to be honest with you, I would still take my risk and go back to Brazil. You still would go back to Brazil? I would still go back to Brazil. <laughs> if not there, Colombia. Okay, okay. So you prefer South America over Southeast Asia? Yeah, if I had to choose Southeast Asia, Vietnam. Okay, okay. So how was your trip in Vietnam? Uh. The culture was very strong there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I liked about Bahia in Brazil is that everywhere you went there was Bayana music playing. Uh, everybody had on their little African outfits. And I like going places where I see the culture, you know, very rich culture. Uh, I don't know how I'm trying, how I'm trying to say, but cultures that, places that are rich in culture, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Vietnam was that you got to see the Vietnam War Museum. That's not so much culture, but it's the history. Mm -hmm. You know, they had on their little straw hats. You know they had plenty of Vietnamese restaurants. You got to, you got to try authentic pho. Mm -hmm. Everything was just very Vietnamese while you were there. Not a lot. People spoke English, but it was less catered to tourists, I say, than Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Thailand and the main and this and this is in Ho Chi Minh City, which I believe like eight million people or something like that live. So it's a major city. Uh, but in Thailand's major cities, they're becoming more and more saturated with tourists, and I think I get less culture from the major cities here. Okay, okay. And let, let's go back to Brazil for a minute. So this situation didn't sour you towards uh, Brazil at all? No, because based off my interactions, I knew that that's not what the average Brazilian I met was like. Uh, I ran into maybe one or two Stephanie Hiberos on the street in, in Bahia the whole time I was there. But on average, I was pretty much meeting the Brazilian woman that I always bragged about on YouTube. The, the characteristics I talked about, that's pretty much what I was always meeting. So I knew it wasn't all of them. I was upset at how many of them just read a headline and ran with it just like how they do in America. I guess that's a worldwide thing where people just read the headline and take off with the whole story rather than actually thinking about it or actually reading what they're talking about. Um, like there was a, a chicken reel that I reached out to just checking up on it. It was like last week. And I just broke it to her because at this point I got to tell everybody because I don't want them to be like, oh, I see this. What is this? So I told her, did you hear about this? And she's like, oh my gosh, your content is horrible. She said that before she even looked at my content. She just read the news headline because she sent it right away as soon as I sent the um, the letter, the, the article. Mm -hmm. And then I said, yeah, but this woman is lying on me saying that there was an investigation to make me look like a criminal. Mm -hmm. So I said, here's my lawyers 
uh, verification from the federal government saying that there's nowhere, there was never an investigation on my name in Brazil and I sent her the document. And instantly she changed her whole perspective like, oh, I see what you mean now. Mm -hmm. So people run with headlines, but uh, I still I still go back to Brazil. I still love it. Okay, cool. So this situation in Brazil, um, is, it, is this gonna make you kind of switch up your content in any form of way, or are you gonna continue to do like the street interviews? And do you think what really triggered it was some of the maybe kickback from the red pill type of content or questioning that you do, or going back and forth during the gender war? I definitely think that's what it was. Uh, that may have been that may have been what Stephanie had an issue with was maybe that oh why is this gringo down here asking her how soon will she go home with a, a man and then she goes to my channel and sees that I have more than likely uh, since she's a feminist I have a completely flip side viewpoint of the world than she does and that probably triggered her that's why I said this might be part of her agenda because oh we're taking out this massages man is probably what she's labeling it as is a victory for feminism whatever silliness she got going on but uh I think had I not, I don't think the comparison videos was a problem. Cause that was working in Brazilians favor. I don't think they would have been so outraged about that. I think it was just viewpoints I had about women and that small feminism portion of Brazil flipped out about that. Uh, I do know now that red pill content and tourist co I mean, uh, travel content is a slippery slope to go on because mm -hmm. Like people said before, what flies in the United States is not as easy to get away with in other countries. So maybe the way how I said some things, that may have caused outrage back home. But we got basically total freedom of speech to mm -hmm. a certain degree. I mean, you can get canceled, but we got freedom of speech of what we can say, not get locked up, not be a crime for most things that we say. Uh, but being a foreigner, and it's not viewed the same way. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't a crime, I, I can see now that they, they don't view it the same way. The majority of them, or minority, whichever. Okay. Okay, so are, are you kind of done with the red pill content, or are you just going to stick to the... Because you got a really dope travel channel. Like, you you know, you've been blogging daily. You've been hitting different countries. You're on the way to uh, your new destination. Yeah. Uh, so are you going to kind of stick to more so of an informational vlog, or are you going to be more like on the foreign dating culture to a certain degree? Uh, considering what happened to foreign dating coach, I think I'm gonna have to pass on that. I, I don't even, I don't want to be in that situation again where I feel like there's an international manhunt on me again. That was stressful. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you asked me before, am I gonna switch up my content? If I do have women in the videos, I think it's smarter to have, be consistent with the same one. Just like how I had Kate in my videos, they can't hit me with the tourism allegation for one woman. You know, if I'm practicing that type of tourism, I'm sleeping with multiple women, as many as I can, basically. But if I have one woman, what do you do? That's every bit of, oh, he might be dating her. That might be his future wife. That, that's not what it turned out to be, but just saying. Uh, but I think just more so showing the culture, now that I'm not doing so much red pill, because I wanted to do that stuff, but I didn't think of it the way I did before. I wanted to show food in Bahia or how to grocery shop in Bahia. But nobody clicks on that stuff. But when I got to Thailand, I said, Kate, go grocery shopping for me. I'm gonna record it. Everybody clicks on it. So you have to, I, I didn't think of that middle ground. Plus in Brazil, a lot of women don't wanna be on camera for some reason, like the most things. They like to be super private, so that made it a lot harder, but yeah. Okay. Switching up the content to be more showing the culture and maybe just having one woman will do, you know, wherever I go. Whether if she's a real tour guide or somebody I'm into, you know. Okay, so speaking on that, give me one difference on American women, Colombian women, Brazilian women, Asian women. Okay. Uh, the difference between American women and Brazilian women and Brazilian women are more passionate or cooperative. Try to figure out which word is best. Well, passionate, cooperative, or are they? It's not submissive. It's not that they're. It's not that they're unsubmissive. It's just that's not what I would 
first think of when I think Brazil. They're just more cooperative and passionate. They're more into it when they deal with you. Let's say that they're they're all lies on you. There's an American woman. She's trying to juggle her options, and she might not want to play all her cards up front for whatever. I mean, I get it, right? But that's not attractive to me either. You acting like you don't like me and half-assing how you treat me is not attractive. Uh, Colombian women. The only thing I have to say negative about Colombian women is that they are often late. Uh, but American women are flaky. So which one would you rather have? At least the Colombian women, they'll video chat you to show you, hey, I'm running late, but I'm still getting dressed, you know. Uh, they were very, I would say they were, it's hard to say if Brazilian women or Colombian women are a little more feminine, but I do know that the Colombian women were a lot more, They, to me, they were a lot more shy and just sitting right up on you on your side. I, what is that? I guess you could call that affectionate. But Brazilian women are affectionate too. It's South America, they're kind of all similar from what I've seen in those two countries. Uh, but I, I still got more traveling to do down there to find out. Mm -hmm. Asian women are more, uh, I think you find the most tradition here so far. So far, I haven't traveled everywhere. Right. Going to Africa. Southeast so. Asian women, basically. Southeast Asian, yeah, they, they are, uh, one word I can use to describe them is docile. Mm -hmm. Docile. They're uh, very shy, depending on where you at. But for the most part, especially in places like the Philippines, they're very shy, uh, reserved. A lot of them are not, you know, very loud speaking like they would be in the United States. Uh, overall, just like everywhere else, more feminine. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you prefer the Philippines or Thailand? Thailand 100%. Oh, the Philippines. Yeah, I, I don't even know when I'm going to go. You know, I don't know when I'm going to ever go back there. Yeah, I'll be older if I go back. Hmm, okay. And is it a, a difference you think that you see? Because now you're traveling, you kind of hang around guys that's older than you and everything. Uh, do you see the value in that? Like, you know, being more so of a, a I would say, uh, a patriarch to a certain degree like you got guys giving you counsel from tailor-made and you got guys that's younger than you you know maybe even a few years younger than you uh do you feel you see a value in that and having set? a brotherhood yeah uh yes because men need to be around other men i think men become feminine when they don't hang around other men that don't rough them up or they don't learn how to deal with women off of or learn responsible habits from Mm -hmm. So I think that's it's it's always important for men to interact with other men. Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent, man. And uh, just give us your thoughts. Uh, what we look forward to on on your channel, on your on your new journey. Uh, the next stop is Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I'll be going to uh, what is it, Dar es Salaam, I believe. Dar Salaam. Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. Yeah, I don't. They speak English, but that seems like that might be like French or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm going there next and I'm gonna travel the whole continent of Africa. I was gonna go to Europe to try to catch it before it gets warm, but Africa is so big, you'll be stuck in Africa for a while because I'm gonna do Ethiopia, Ghana. To get a visa in Ghana, you have to mail the, the paperwork to them. You can't buy it online. You gotta mail the paperwork. Because I was gonna go there instead of Tanzania, but because I wanted to go there first, but you gotta mail the paperwork. And I was, I'm ready to leave right now. So uh, Ghana, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Ethiopia, South Africa, Nigeria, Morocco, and I think that's going to be it for Africa. I may come back and add some later. Oh, and Madagascar. I can't forget that one. I think I'm going to go to Madagascar after Tanzania to stay next to each other. I want to go to Mozambique too, uh, but I heard that they have terrorists there. Uh, that actually, that the terrorists sometimes make it into Tanzania, from what I see, uh -huh. and they're coming from Mozambique. I don't really want to be involved in too much of that. So, mm, okay, okay. And do you think you may, looking back on everything since you left America, what was that? Maybe was October sixteenth. October sixteenth. So it hasn't been a full year yet. No. All right. Do you think you made the right decision by leaving America and coming and becoming a travel YouTuber? Yeah. Only thing I miss is my family. I don't miss anything else. Well, family and close friends. I don't miss anything else about the States. I don't miss my car. I don't miss none of that. Mm -hmm. Food, none of that. I think I'm a lot happier 
uh, I'm maturing a lot faster outside of the United States because you get to experience life more, especially with the fact that you join like an upper class as far as financials when you leave the United States in most countries. All right, man. But well, once again, man, great show. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you.